This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone and it's Saturday and that means it's time for Nita Notes, my weekly vlog series where I talk about limited magic. We're in the very early stages of Streets of New Capenna limited season. Uh, I played in the Early Access event on Tuesday, and then, of course, it launched on Arena this Thursday for everybody else. Uh, and I'm about seven drafts in at this point, but I already have some takeaways that I want to talk about. In particular, five overperformers from the set, um, you know, and so we'll take a look at those cards. These are basically cards that are being more effective than I expected them to be going into the format. So let's just start looking at those. First up, I have Night Clubber. So... I mean, I thought this was going to be really good. I said it was Black's Best Uncommon, um, so how could it be an overperformer? Well, because it's been even better than that. Um, I mean, you can't be better than the any other Uncommons, obviously, but, I, you know, I was thinking it was like a B, and it's felt more like a B+, plus, a card that is incredibly good. Um, there's just so few situations where blitzing this in doesn't drastically alter the board in your favor. And then there's lots of situations where you get like a two for one or a three for one. Um, it just, no matter what you do with this, it's often doing some serious work. There's a lot of X1s around, a lot of tokens around, and just clearing those out is even better than I expected. Uh, so Night Clubber has been great. One of the best uncommons in the set, and not just the best uncommon in black. I've been very impressed with it overall. Next up, it's Boon of Safety. So, you know, going into the set, in the set review, I talked about how, you know, this sort of feels like it could be this format's Tamiyo's Safekeeping. Um, you know, a one-mana spell that can save a creature from a variety of different bad things happening to it. Um, and overall, it has performed that way. Um, I was a little skeptical. I thought maybe the shield counter would be enough worse, you know, because it doesn't stop things like minus X, minus X. You know, Tamiyo Safekeeping gave you Indestructible and Hexproof, and those two together are definitely better than just a shield counter, but a shield counter protects from enough things that you still end up getting these massive tempo boosts where you're paying one mana for the shield counter, you're even scrying, which matters. And, you know, I said in the set review, I feel like you'll cut this a lot, but I think in the end, basically any creature heavy white deck is usually wanting to run one of these just because the utility they allow for is a pretty big deal. The tempo they can give you is a big deal. So it's been better than I expected. I've been burned by this card many times in the format already, seven drafts in. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been quite impressive. Next, I've got Luxurious Libation. So I thought this was going to be a pretty good trick. I liked the idea that it scaled, even though it was never that efficient. You know, if you're paying X plus green, the boost you get is never going to be that efficient. And I also mentioned that I liked that sometimes you'll be able to get an additional bonus because you have Alliance. So you get the bonus from the trick itself and then some sort of Alliance trigger. And those things have lined up, but they've just been even better than I expected. The times where you can just kill someone with Boon of Safety or find lethal out of nowhere thanks to Boon of Safety are great. You know, people are really not super inclined to block Blitz creatures um, because they know they're going to die anyway, and, you know, it's not a great feeling to block a lot of the Blitz creatures. But uh, that pairs pretty well, ends up pairing pretty well with Luxurious Libation. You know, you had to pay the mana to Blitz the creature in, but a lot of those Blitz creatures are so big that, you know, if you're giving it plus three, plus three on top of whatever it's already doing... You can just find lethal out of nowhere. Um, so it ends up feeling sort of like a fireball a little more often than I expected uh, overall. Um, and yeah, the alliance part ends up mattering pretty often too. You know, you can get some additional stats boost, some additional triggers. And it, you know, it's been a nice card overall. Next up, it's sort of a trio of cards, I guess. And this is one that I took advantage, advantage of in, in my first Maestro's deck in the format. That ultimately I went six and three with, you know, in the in the early access event, um, and it involves Cormella, you know, the um, signpost uncommon basically for Maestros, and then it involves also Rogues Gallery or the other Cemetery whatever card. I'll put it on the screen. It's not coming to me off the top of my head, but the one that has um, uh, Casualty One, the one that lets you mill a couple of cards and then you return something. Combining Cormella with either of those is very powerful uh, because you can create a loop 
with them. It feels sort of like Colossal Sky Turtle did, you know, with a bunch of other cards in the last set. Um, it does usually involve, you know, um, getting Cormella and then either a common or an uncommon to make it work. Uh, but it's pretty doable. I think it's going to feel a lot like, again, that Sky Turtle combo from the last set where you can just keep on sort of cycling through them and getting additional value. Um, you know, Rogue's Gallery... I thought would be pretty good in a lot of these graveyard-based decks because I knew you'd have enough cards with different colors, and it's been, you know, even better than I expected. A very real win condition in a lot of decks is basically just Rogue's Gallery, um, and if you're combining it with some additional recursion from Cormella, who returns it back to your hand when she dies, and then getting her back again, and, and so forth... Um, you end up with some serious, serious value that is hard to beat. And the last card I want to talk about is Ominous Parcel. Um, you know, this kind of card's always interesting. It's not particularly efficient at either thing it does, as I said in my set review. But it is, you know, this format largely, so far, uh, has seemed fairly not fast and maybe not glacially slow, but it seemed fairly slow. A lot of players start the game by setting up their mana, and that means the parcel is a little better than I expected, especially at setting up your mana in the first place. You know, you end up playing three full colors in this format a fair bit. You splash a fourth color sometimes. Sometimes you end up in like two colors and you're more of a splash of a third. But either way, the parcel ends up being pretty good fixing. It's still not something I would play in like every deck ever. But as far as fixing goes, if you're having a hard time grabbing lands, which are the ideal way to do it, there's lots of good fixing lands in the format. If you're having a hard time grabbing those, the parcel is nice, and then it has the upside of being removal. Um, it can also sort of set up the cards that check for mana values in your graveyard because it's a mana value of a card you can get into your graveyard early. Um, so, yeah, you know, those are the five cards right now that have really stood out to me. The sort of, what, seven, I guess, because we talked about Cormella alongside a couple of other things. Uh, but overall, um, th those are the ones so far that have really stood out to me. Uh, next week, you know, in this portion of the video, I'll probably talk about some underperformers. Uh, now, we'll, as usual, uh, close out this edition of Needs and Notes with a discussion of a crack a pack. We'll look at a pack one, pick one scenario. I'll talk about each card in the pack, how I feel about it right now in the format, and then tell you what I would first pick. So let's dive into that. Okay, so here is our pack. We've got a foil, and it's a foil uncommon, and it's involuntary employment. This card is pretty legit in the right deck, but it is a very specific deck. It's generally the Maestro's one, but there's enough cheap ways to sacrifice your opponent's stuff, um, you know, like a little chat that costs two and light them up that costs two, that casting involuntary employment, stealing their thing, and then sacrificing it to one of those spells is just absurd. And you only need one additional mana untapped because it gives you back a treasure. So it's very doable, but it's not really something you want to first pick. It does have a pretty impressive ceiling because there is a deck that actually supports it in the format. But it has a pretty horrible floor too. Like if you don't end up in a deck with enough sacrifice outlets, you don't play it. So you definitely don't take it here. Here's big score next. You know, this is a fairly replaceable card. Like most of these sort of, you know, this is like Tormenting Voice plus a couple of treasure. You know, it's like Unexpected Windfall. It's basically the same card. Um, and uh, it's fine in limited. It's not great, but it does fix for you. There's treasure synergies. Definitely not something you take early. Dapper Shieldmate, you know, this is a serviceable creature in your white decks. Certainly not a great one. And not even one that I think makes the cut all the time, but shield counters are pretty powerful. Um, they're not quite worth a full card, I don't think, because there's enough ways to get rid of a shield counter with less than a full card. But, you know, I'd say something like 60%, 70% of a card is what a shield counter feels like. And that's pretty good. It may, And, you know, in the set review, I was like, I'm pretty sure all these cards with shield counters are costed the way they are. They all seem sort of over costed when you look at their stat lines. Pretty sure it's because these shield counters are really good, and that has panned out, but shield mate, not exactly one of the ones you're after. Jewel Thief is next, and this is definitely what we want to first pick now. This thing just all sorts of silly value. Uh, great stats, gives you treasure, so it ramps and fixes for you. You can play this in turn three, slam a five drop on turn four, and that's not something that that, that is that easy to come back from for your opponent. It's a great common, one of the best ones in the set, probably only outshone by Inspiring Overseer. Uh, those are probably the two best commons in the set, so you're pretty happy taking a Jewel Thief. Uh, Warm Welcome, this thing's fine. Um, you know, it works reasonably well 
in decks that are interested in Alliance because it lets you get some decent card selection on top of triggering Alliance. But it is kind of clunky still. I mean, it's basically, you can look at it as a three mana one one with flash that lets you put the best creature in your top five uh, into your hand. And that's that's a fine card for sure, but it's nothing great. And I don't think you always end up playing it. Um, so I don't think I'm that interested in taking it. Fake Your Own Death is next. Uh, you know, this is a fine version of this trick that we see all the time. It is a card that'll make the cut in your deck, but not something you'll ever first pick. Revelation of Power, kind of the same thing. Decent trick. It'll make the cut in your aggressive white decks, but it's not something you want to take early. Case the Joint. Haven't been super impressed with this. Um, there's just, you know, spending mana to not add to the board. It just feels like it's getting worse and worse in these limited formats. And um, that's what you end up doing with Case the Joint. It's fine. Don't get me wrong. Um, but again, it's it's not a close that's remotely card that's remotely close to being one I want to take early, and I don't even think it's one that always makes the cut in your deck. Glittermonger, this helps set up your mana, has mediocre stats. Um, you know, if you have treasure synergies and you're playing more than three colors or you don't have enough fixing otherwise, then you play it. But again, not something you want to take early. Riveteer's Initiate, this is a quality two drop. Obviously, you, you do want to be able to pay for its, its activated ability because that lets it trade with anything. Um, but, you know, it's kind of in the same... I think it's better than Dapper Shield Mate, but it's not that much better. It's just sort of a, a card that'll make the cut. You know, it's basically only better because it's a two drop and those are always so important lately. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Sleep of the Fishes, okay. So this is a pretty good removal spell. It's one that I've talked about before in Needs and Nodes, and I've talked about when streaming because it has a really interesting tension where it's not good at all against stuff that can be sacrificed, and there's a lot of that. Like, I've had people play Sleep the Fishes, Sleep of the Fishes on a creature that I was going to sacrifice anyway, and there's even some instant speed ways to sacrifice, and you could do it in response, and then Sleep of the Fishes doesn't even give them the fish. And that's all downside. But the flip side of that is it does deal with shield counters efficiently and gets that creature out of the way entirely while adding to your board. And so I'm not 100% sure where I stand on it still. Um, it may be more like, you know, in the last crack -a pack we had one and I said, you know, maybe it's more like a B minus instead of the C plus I gave it in the set review because of shield counters. But I'm sort of, right now, I sort of feel like I've moved back down to a C plus or so. But it, it's a good card. I think it's definitely the second best card in the pack. Jewel Thief is definitely where we want to be right now. Uh, Security Rocks. This is a good payoff for doing treasure stuff. You know, it's pretty sweet to play, um, well, you could play like Jewel Thief, for example. Uh, and then maybe you already had another treasure. And then the next turn you play Security Rocks for two. And then another three drop. And, uh, you know, that's pretty commonplace. I still think I like Jewel Thief more and probably Sleep with the Fishes too. You know, it is a gold card in a set where gold stuff's easy to do, but it's not such a good gold card that I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm still on Jewel Thief here. Tavern Swindler is next. This is such a weird card. This and Suspicious Bookcase. I'm not sure why they felt like they needed to print either of these in the set, reprint either of these. You know, if they weren't reprints, it wouldn't be as weird. It's like, yeah, okay, that's a new card. But when they do a reprint for basically no reason that has no special synergy in the set, which is true of the Swindler in the bookcase, I don't I don't really know what they're doing. You know, there is that one uncommon vampire that's like a life loss, life gain payoff. That's literally it. And uh, yeah, I mean, Tavern Swindler is mostly a two mana, two, two with minimal upside. You'll play it if you need two drops and you won't most of the time. We do have a really great rare. We have Urbrask, Heretic Praetor. I have actually gotten to play with this one. Um, it is quite strong, as you'd think. You draw an extra card every turn. You know, it's a small sample size, so I'm not ready to say it's an underperformer yet, you know, because it's a mythic that I've played with once, and I haven't played against it at all. Um, but the part where you downgrade your opponent's draw every turn definitely wasn't as impressive as I was hoping it would be. You know, you put them in a use-it-or-lose-it mode, but it just feels like most of the time my opponent, like the chances my opponent hits a land or something they can cast um, are pretty high, you know. And yeah, they have to alter their game plan. Maybe they have to give up a powerful card. Uh, maybe they're not adding cards to their hand. You know, there's there's a number of things that are ha that can happen that you don't see, you know, that your opponent's having to do because of Urabrask. But um, 
it does seem less good, the part where I'm hating on their draw. And again, I've gotten this in play like twice, and I did still win both games that I got it in play. It just seemed like, I was like, wow, my opponent just keeps, you know, hitting things that they can play. And I was a little frustrated, but I was still drawing an extra card every turn effectively, so couldn't complain too much. So that all that said, Urubrask is definitely what we take here. You know, it's great that it's a monocolored card um, and that it's so, so strong. Uh, but I think it goes Urubrask, Jewel Thief, Sleep with the Fishes, Security Rocks. I think in that order is, is how I would take these cards. I think after that, it's probably like Involuntary Employment, just because all the other cards in the pack are kind of medium, and the Employment does have that really impl impressive ceiling that the other cards in this pack just don't have, you know? So that's what I would do in the end. Urubrask it is. So that'll do it for this edition of Nietzsche Notes. Like I said earlier, I'll be back next week, of course, and I'll probably be talking about some cards that haven't been quite as good as I had hoped they would be. Maybe Urobrask will be in it. Probably not, because the chances I get to play with or against it again between now and then aren't super high, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Urobrask is still really great, though. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it, too. Uh, if you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to see me drafting live, which I do a couple of times every week on Twitch, uh, you can find the link to my Twitch uh, channel in the description. Um, so check that out too. And yeah, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can on Patreon or by subscribing on Twitch. Thanks for watching.